And I'm going to read in four different places of the Word of God. We're going to look into Luke chapter 13 for a verse. And in the Gospel of Luke chapter 13 and verse 23, it says, Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. There's another verse in Ephesians chapter 2, and verse number 8, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Then I'm thinking about a couple verses that is found in the Gospel of Luke once again. And it's found in Luke chapter 19. And if we look at verse number 41, it says, And when he was come, that's the Lord Jesus, and when the Lord Jesus was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. And that is Jerusalem. And he said, then in verse 44, he said, Thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. Then I'm thinking of a verse that is found in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. And it says, This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. My friend, tonight, as we have read these four portions of scriptures together, what I like to speak on is advantage. My subject tonight is things to take advantage of. We come into the world today, and when we think of advantage, usually the dictionary will give us a definition. And the definition that is given there is what is above and over. It's what is original. Something that we need to take advantage of. And there's lots of times that we don't even have to have this little word explained to us. It is something that we are very used to. Many of us know what it is like to go to a store. And we like to go to sales. Not so much myself, but there's others that like to go to sales. And they love to go there. And when they come back, they say, You said you should have seen what I've seen. What a sale. I saved a lot of money. And then there are those that think about the outcome of taking advantage. Some are very satisfied with the outcome. Some even go as far as boasting. Boasting about it. But then there are some that are contented. But then there are some that are unsatisfied. When we come to the Word of God tonight, we like to look at Four things that you need to take advantage of. And to take advantage, we are going to look at to take advantage of an open door. That's why when we see in Luke chapter 13, it says strive to enter in at the straight gate. But then in Ephesians chapter 2, we need to take an advantage of a gift that is of faith. It says, For by grace are ye saved. The gift of God is eternal life. And we need to take advantage of this gift. But then we think of the Lord Jesus. And when he was coming into Jerusalem, he looked over it and he started to weep. Because 70 years later, 
There's not one stone that was not overthrown. Jerusalem was destroyed. And he said these words, Thou knowest not the day of thy visitation. The Lord Jesus Christ was visiting this city. If we don't take advantage of what God has to say in His Holy Word, we're going to miss it. And there are numerous people tonight that have missed and it didn't take advantage of an open door. They did not take advantage of a gift that is given by God, nor they spurn the opportunity that they had that they may come and trust the Savior of sinners. But when we come to 1 Timothy chapter 1 and 15, it's the only salvation there is. There's not many salvations like the world would like to tell you that there is. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And we see in 1 Timothy, it tells us this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The most important in your whole life is this. Will you take advantage of these things to be reached and saved? Or will you just pass by the things of God, take no advantage, and God doesn't say to you that you're going to misuse them or abuse them? Is God in His Word in Isaiah chapter 1? And he says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. You know what it is like to take advantage of a sale? You will get blessed by it most of the times. But you take advantage of God's salvation. And it will give you the greatest blessing that you could ever have for this life. And a life that will live through the countless ages of eternity. My friend, tonight we're going into eternity. The Word of God tells us it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this to judgment, you and I are going out into eternity. And we're going out to meet God. But up on this earth, while you are in your soundness of your mind and body, that you may be able to take advantage of these things. I think about others, and that's what they had done. I think of myself, 35 years ago, I took advantage of these things. My soul is saved eternally, never to be lost. That's why I like to look at these four things. For it tells us when we think of an open door, it says we're told to strive to enter in at the straight gate. My friend, this door is hard to get into. There's only few there to find it. And the disciples said unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? There are those that are saved by the grace of God. There are those getting saved by the grace of God. And God's heaven will be filled with those that are saved. We come to Luke 13 and we see tonight that it is an open door. It is a door that you need to get into. It's open tonight, for we can read into the Word of God. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You need to strive to enter in. 
And that word strive means to make the most effort, whatever you can do, to agonize even within your own soul, to strive to get in to that open door. Not only is it an open door, but it's only one door. And sometimes we sing with the children and even with our own selves we sing. One door and only one, yet the sides are two. I'm on the inside, and which side are you? You need to get in this door, and you say, well, maybe I do. I got lots of time, but my friend, the Bible tells us that that door is going to be shut. Someday it's going to be shut. It will close. It will not be open again. And it can't be opened once it's closed. That's why we say, take advantage of this open door. When we think about this open door, we think of the day of, of grace that we're living in. You're going to be saved tonight. But I'm thinking of something else. That the Lord is coming. And when the Lord comes, take his own that are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. They're going to rise to meet him, meet him in the air. And when that happens, the door is going to be closed. No more salvation for those that have heard the gospel. Those that are even hearing our voice tonight. You can't take advantage when the Lord comes. You need to take advantage of the open door that is tonight. You don't have lots of time to get in this door. You don't know when you're going to go into eternity. 